you'll learn very quickly from those around you. All right. When the heroine comes out on stage, what do you say? Aww. Let's bring out our heroine. All right. When the hero comes on stage, what do you say? Yay! Yay! Hero, come on out. Yay! All right. And the last person that we're going to introduce is the villain. You've got that down. Now, there's also a couple of rules that go along with the villain. The popcorn that you purchased is legal to throw. Yes! Now, remember though, we want the popcorn thrown, not the box. Okay? One other thing that we have had some difficulties with, if you're sitting kind of at the back and you want to come up and kind of toss some popcorn from the side, and they go sit back down, that's okay. Young people, do not congregate right here at the front of the stage. It makes it hard for other people to see. So we ask you to help us with that. So, the villain, we boo, we hiss. Let's bring out the villain! Nobody's getting him yet. Money? Uh, Give it over. Where's Pace? Dad. Come here. Buy two more boxes of popcorn and throw them at Steve Dash. <laughs> no! No! Where is he? All right. About halfway through the show, we will be taking an intermission for about 10 minutes. You'll be able to reload with popcorn. We'll also have some pop and stuff to sell at that time. So, I don't have anything else to say. Let's turn it over to the right wrestlers of Red Rock. Gosh darn it. You know, 
I'd sure like to get my hands wrapped around their scrawny little necks. Then I'd throw them at one side, spits all necktie party. <laughs> How's your little girl, Miss Blossom, taking the news? I just don't see how she's able to bear up under all this pressure. Running this big ranch all by herself. I just don't see how she does it. Well, ma'am. Miss Blossom is just a flat-out inspiration to me and to all the other boys. Wow! She knows more about this ranch than any of us put together. It just doesn't seem right that a girl as sweet and gentle as my Blossom should have to run a spread as big as the Circle D Ranch by herself. But since her father was lost to us a year ago, I fear we have no choice. Wow, well, I just wish there was something I could do about them blasts for us. Well, you could start standing watch at night. Oh, watch what? The herd. Well, herd what, Miss Lily? <laughs> the cattle herd. What have the cattle herd? <laughs> Keep an eye on them. Keep an eye on the herd. Wow, what have they been up to? Rustling? <laughs> How in the blazes could the herd be rustling itself? Well, that's the silliest dang thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> is it me or is this ranch ham three pancakes short of a full stack? <laughs> Well, don't you worry about that. What? I got me the eyes of you. Yeah. Well, you got the brains of a bird. <laughs> well, I thank you, Miss Lily. And you might also keep an eye on that ranch foreman of ours, Shane Bushwhacker. That's good advice. Oh, no. <laughs> might work your way up to ranch foreman someday. Morning, Mrs. White. Hope I was interrupting something. Oh, he was just talking about the rash of whistling. Oh, a terrible thing. <laughs> Maybe if you two had been around last night, we wouldn't have lost another pesky head of cattle. Come to think about it, just where were you two? Well, uh... We was doing what men have to do when men of the West have to do it. <laughs> Out behind the bush, piddle it. <laughs> I know where you were. You were down to that saloon at Red Rock. And I suppose you were just there listening to that scarlet vixen woman sing. <laughs> we were enjoying the culture of the plains, as a matter of fact. As much as I'd like to stay and listen to the rest of your bull talking story, I've got cooking to do. Well, ma'am, I just don't see what's all fired bad about a red-blooded man of the West doing what a red-blooded man of the West has got to do. Out behind the bush, piddling a gap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that I don't think you and the other boys are just attracted to that scarlet singing voice. Why? I don't trust her any further than I could throw her. <laughs> a little thing like you? Well, I don't think you could throw her very far, ma'am. I had to throw her twice as far as I could trust her. You know as well as I do that she's trying to buy up every ranch in the county. I wonder, is she one of those environmentalists? <laughs> <laughs> Now, you wouldn't be jealous, would you, Miss White? Jealous? Don't be ridiculous. You sure about that? I'm as sure as I'm standing here. Well, I'm going back to the kitchen. <laughs> is it me, or is there something shifty about that ranch foreman of ours? <laughs> the sheriff have to say about the rustlers raiding the herd again last night? He just filled out a report like last time 
and filed it like last time. Little does he know that I'm the one that's after the herd. But I'll have to watch my step. And that's good advice for anybody that's working with cattle. You gotta watch your step. Right? I just feel awful I wasn't here to catch him. Oh, shame, ain't it? Shame? That it is. The only shame about it is I wasn't able to steal more of the cattle while I was at it. Miss Lily thinks if we've been watching the herd instead of going into town, well then make. Well, if you hadn't talked me into going into town and visiting Scarlet oh Crimson's Palace alone and Social Club, well, maybe we would have been able to catch them varmints. There's a very good reason we went to town, Harry. The reason is, I had to find a way to get this fool away from the ranch so I could steal back under the cover of darkness and rustle the cattle. Yeah. And because he thought I was with him, I have the perfect alibi. The reason, Harry, is relaxation. See, I knew you had a good reason, Sam. <laughs> He's about ten bricks and shy of a load, ain't he? What I meant to say, my dim-witted old friend, is that all work and no play make shame and Harry dull boys. Oh, see, I, I know it would have been something like that. <laughs> yeah, if we don't find a way to stay relaxed, how are we going to be expected to do our duties about the ranch? Hey. And last night was the first night in a long time we've had a night off. Oh, you sure are right there. You know, the last time we had off was, well, two days ago. I don't think we've had a night off since. The last time them rustlers hit! And if we don't find a way to stay relaxed and happy, how are we going to catch them fine, hard-working rustlers? I mean, those despicable, degenerate, disgusting, and desperate desperados. <laughs> are you two just going to stand there, or are you coming in to eat? Lunch? Well, I gotta warn ya, I got twice the emptiness inside of my belly as a deep, dry well. What? I'm hungrier than a bear coming out of hibernation. Why, well, I'm hungrier than a skunk finding a chicken coop with no rotten eggs. Well, in fact, I'm hungrier than a Mormon on fast Sunday. <laughs> I was wondering where he got that name from. Count me out, I got work to do. What did we say, what did you say we was having for lunch? Well, it's been such a hot day, I just yeah. fixed a very light lunch. We're having steak, pork chops, ham, <laughs> mashed potatoes, and gravy, fried chicken, baked chicken, country fried taters, candied yams, peas, and green beans. That's oh, so an iced many tea. Dumb. What? No grits? Oh. Well, if that's all you got, I suppose I'm gonna have to make do. <laughs> if you're not going to honor us with your presence at the table, just what are you going to be doing? I don't think she likes me. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing whatever it takes, Mrs. White. You got a problem with that? Maybe. Well, maybe I've got a problem with you. And maybe I've got a problem no. with you. <laughs> Take on an extra man that we might not be able to pay 
are even paid? I'm just concerned that we can't afford it right now. As much as I hate to say it, I've got to agree with the old bat. I mean your mother. Shame, shame, shame. With all the rustling that's right. been happening around here, I felt it prudent to hire an extra hand and an extra pair of eyes. And when I first laid eyes on that handsome, dashing stranger, I couldn't keep my eyes off him. And when I first heard his deep, reassuring voice, I felt as if, as if I'd been spoken to by, by an angel of the plains. Oh, oh goodness me, where are my manners? I have forgotten to make the proper introduction. Mama, this is Mr. Steve Gashley. <laughs> your poor old widowed mother. <laughs> you can call me Mrs. White. Call me Steve, ma'am. Most folks do. This is a handshake of a man that can be trusted. <laughs> <clears throat> and I'm Shane Bushwhack. <laughs> I think I might be saying what I mean to say when I mean to say it. And nobody tells me when I can smile. Uh, Mr. Dashing, did I happen to mention that Mr. Bushwhacker is our ranch foreman? I don't reckon you did. If I stepped on your boots, I do apologize, but I gotta warn you. Most things I need to say get said. Boots or no boots. I'll keep that in mind become clear that this dashing fool is somebody I'll have to draw down on someday. In the meantime, why don't you get something to eat the rest of the ranch hands? That sounds like a good idea, but as hot as it is today, I don't think I can go for any more than a little steak, pork chops, ham, fried chicken, baked chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy, country fried taters, candy yams, green beans, peas, and some iced tea. I don't even have room for grits. <laughs> Dashing. We'll talk later. I expect so. I'm trying to see if I can be of any help in the kitchen. Follow me, Mr. Dashing. I'd follow you anywhere, Miss White. Aww. This angel of the prairie is so good and so kind, I feel lower than low about lying to her. I'll just have to do what I gotta do and hope someday she'll be able to forgive me. Miss <laughs> White, may I have a word with you? <laughs> now it's time to put this unsuspecting dove under my control. Her affections will be the jewels on the crown of my villainy. This wife, I wish to see forward, but I must speak my mind. Running this ranch must be a terrible responsibility. It is a great responsibility, and one that I am happy to bear. When my dear daddy passed over the other side of that great fence line of life, well, somebody had to take over. But it seems like such a great burden for someone with such delicate well, shoulders as yours. I think you need a man's help. Well, but I have you and Quiet Harry and the rest wow. of the boys. And now I have Steve. I mean, Mr. Dashing. Well, how many more men do I need? Perhaps I haven't made myself clear. You see, were you to marry me, I could take the burden of running this ranch off your shoulders. It would leave you more time to do what women enjoy, like cooking and cleaning and sewing, <laughs> washing <laughs> clothes, etc., etc. It would also save me the trouble of stealing the rest of her cattle. Because once we were married, 
they be mine. I think you didn't understand this. I mean for you to be my wife. Why, why, Mr. Bushwacker? I had no idea that you felt this way. And I'm pretty sure I do not want him to feel this way. No. I had no idea that you cared for me, sir. Oh, I do, I do. You and your mother have been so kind to me, I feel that taking over the ranch and being your husband is the least I can do to repay you. But do you love me? Of course I do, with all my heart. In fact, there are many things I love about you. Like her cattle and her ranch. Now, what do you have to say to that, my dear? What is Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do not believe that he is being honest with me. I shall have to think about this proposal, sir. Don't think about it too long. I would hate to be the cause of yet another deep wrinkle in your lovely face. Now the stage is set for the greatest double-cross of my glorious double-crossing career. Once I have this ranch in the palm of my hands, I'll make it a headquarters and a safe haven for every outlaw and rustler in the territory. Rustling and pillaging and doing any and all mischief that comes to my mind. A lot of mischief comes to my mind. I don't know who you are, stranger, but you best be ready to draw down if you know what's good for you. Oh, I know what's good for me. But do you know what's good for you? I'm here to settle up a little business, partner. Fixing. What are you doing here? Settling up a little business. <laughs> you realize the chance you're taking coming here? Yeah. No greater than the chances I take every day of my life. Finding out from those poor cowboys where their herds are, where they're moving them to, and when. I'm taking big chances for you, big boy, and I expect a big payday. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, I do. What if I decide not to? I don't get what's coming to me now. Every citizen in Red Rock County will find out that poor little co co cowpoke, Shane Bushwhacker, is none other than Black Bart Bushwhacker, the true owner and operator of that den of iniquity bearing my name, and the mastermind behind the wrestling operation. You do that to me? Yeah. Without a second thought. That's fair enough. If she was on the other foot, I'd do it to you in a heartbeat. Well, now that we understand each other, perhaps I might get my share from last night's little rustling party. If you insist. Oh, I do. Five hundred dollars. Now that's what I call a good payday. Now that we got that out of the way, perhaps you might explain something to me, Shane? I will, if I can. Well, why is it that you steal the cattle, change the brand, and then sell them back to the very same ranchers you stole them from? Seems so silly to me. It's simple. Why all people? We steal the cattle, change the brands, sell them back to the same suckers we stole them from, then we buy up their land using their money in your name, we end up with the cattle again. That's brilliant. Of course it is. There is one small problem, however. I hate it when you say that. There seems to be a fly in the soup, if you know what I mean. It seems Blossom's hired a new ranch hand. Is he good looking? That's the problem. I see no problem here. Are you still trying to sweeten up that boss lady of yours? You know, I still don't see what you see in that silly girl. What she got that I have got? Innocence and, and the, the key to our future. <laughs> I don't understand, Bart. Oh, sorry. Shame. It's simple. If I can get control of this ranch through marriage, I don't have to buy it. And that's money I can keep in my pocket. My pocket? I mean our pockets. That's what I thought you meant. 
so what's our next move? The new ranch hand. He seems too honest and upright to be trusted. <laughs> Worse yet, Blossom seems to have a soft spot for him. Exactly. I need your help to snare him in your feminine web. He's got to be discredited in the eyes of Blossom White. I have a plan that we'll discuss later. In the meantime, it's dangerous for you to be here. Get back to the saloon until I call for you. I just hope she does not suspect my true motives. Well, that was a very nice story, Steve. But it was a very short story. Perhaps you could be a little more forthcoming with the details. Well, the best way I can say it is I came here to do a job. And when I finish that job, I'll be on my way. I still feel like you're keeping a secret from me, Steve. Golly, I was afraid of this. What would make you think I have a secret? Most folks do. Can you tell me your secret, Steve? Wouldn't really be a secret if I did. Can you tell me anything? All I really wish for him to tell me is that he wants me to be his in holy matrimony. And the only thing I wish to tell her is I find her to be the sweetest creature on this earth. And I want hers to be mine in marriage. Yeah. I can't tell you my secret if that's what you mean. That is sort of what I had in mind. Some secrets are best kept secret. Otherwise, people might get hurt. You know, it's the same way with potato salad. <laughs> I, I reckon it is. Well, can you tell me anything more, Steve? Well, there is one thing I can tell you, Miss White. You may call me Blossom. I reckon that would be nice, Miss Blossom. You were saying? It's always been my dream to one day settle down. Settle down on a good piece of land with a pretty filly. Raise us a herd of fine livestock and a pastel of strong youngins. Then, when it comes to sunset, we stand facing the west, my arm around my lady, Looking out at the golden sunset. Oh! I must confess, his dream made me tingle all over. <laughs> That's a mighty fine dream, Steve. Well, I best be getting back to my chores. Really? What chores is Mr. Bushwhacker giving you already? I reckon finding that out might be my best to. Uh, First chore. I reckon. <laughs>
Harry, I give up. Get back to work. Shane, look at there. Curses. The romance has started already. I'll have to act fast. <laughs> they seem to like each other. That's the part of what I was trying to tell you. You see, I came through here to be doing what I was supposed to be doing. Then I come across this, which, you know, of course, stops me dead in my tracks. Well, I guess how something like seeing something like this would affect a simple cow pope like me. Well, anyway, I Quiet, was just... Harry. Get back to work. Yes, <laughs> now, let's see what we can do about breaking up this little romance before it begins. As I live and breathe, if it isn't the boss lady in the new ranch hand. I was just about to get back to work. You tell me what it is I need to be doing. To help Harry load the manure in the barn. Think you can handle that, Calpo? I reckon. Will I be seeing you later, Steve? I reckon you will, Miss Blossom. Aww. Reckon I'll be seeing you later, too. I reckon. It's good that you reckon that I reckon that you reckon. <laughs> you make things easier when the time comes for the final reckon. You reckon? <laughs> Sounds like you might be calling me out. Might be. I Maybe. You think you're fast enough? Might be. Maybe. You'd like to prove how fast you are. Maybe. Pull your fast, Only what I need to be, Miss Blossom. <laughs> you want to see it again? You didn't see it the first time. <laughs> I uh, know. <laughs> well, I best be getting back to earning my pay. Miss Blossom. Yes. Since it's clear I won't be able to outdraw this, Claude, I'll have to outthink you. You seem to be so good about wanting to earn your keep. How'd you like to go in the Red Rock to pick up some supplies? That is, after you finish here loading the manure. Here's a list of the things we need. Give it to Hank at the general store. You think you can handle that, Calco? I reckon. Make sure you give it to Hank. He's the only one I trust. Perhaps we should discuss our earlier conversation. And what conversation would that be? My very generous offer to marry you and take this ranch off your hands. Oh, that offer. Time is running out, my dear. Have you by chance mistaken me for a patient man? No, not really. Then you must understand that when I see something I want, that thing must be mine. And are you talking about me or my ranch now? Both. I was afraid of that. Would it really be so terrible to be married to a strong and handsome man of the plains? No, not really. In fact, I found one, and I'll be sure to tell him that you said your best. Today indeed you little vixen. Indeed it is, old buddy. That new hired hand that Miss Blossom hired on really doesn't know how to put in a full day of the work. Curses. Foiled again. There'll be other days. Good? Well, you should see this feller slinging manure out in the barn. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he finished before I could even get back to help him. Quiet, Harry. Funny how many folks have been using my full name today. You know, just a few minutes ago, me and Steve was out in the barn, well, you know, loading manure, and I was trying to figure out what deep, dark secret was. Well, after I only asked him about seven or eight times, well, he went up and said, Quiet, Harry. 
How do you know? I have to tell you one more time. Wait, secret? Did you say secret? This might be exactly what I need. What do you know about dashing secrets? Well, don't you have any secrets of your own? Never mind about my secrets, Harry. What do you know about Steve's secrets? Yes. Uh, Nothing. Nothing you say? Yep. Yep, you know nothing, or yep, you have nothing to say? <laughs> See, this is the deal where I try to tell you something. Well, by the end of it, I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Give me such a headache. <laughs> then you don't know what Steve's secret is? No. Then <laughs> why'd you ask? And he says I give him a headache. <laughs> Harry, just let me do the thinking from now on and you handle the backbreaking work. Sounds fair to me. <laughs> this is working out better than I expected. So Dashing Steve Dashing has a deep, dark secret. All I have to do now is plant the seeds of distrust and doubt in the mind of Blossom White, and soon she'll turn to me for comfort and security. And if that doesn't work, I'll turn the business end of my shooting iron her way and force her to turn to me. my land, my cattle, and my money, I'll dispense of her escort of like Bugs under my boots!